Third parties, unions, and the election. I'm Brian Lilly with the Rebel.media. We've heard an awful lot over the last few days about the early election call, the call being made in August instead of September, and that this is all about trying to shut down third parties like Engage Canada or the unions from spending millions on negative attack ads against the Harper Conservatives. Well, yes and no. See, part of that's true. Part of what has been happening in terms of these radio and TV ads funded by unions, funded by the labor movement, which is decidedly against Stephen Harper, part of that is going to have to tone down. It won't have to shut down completely, but the spending limits are incredibly low compared to the millions that the unions were hoping to spend. But that doesn't mean that the union campaign against Stephen Harper is done. Not in the least. Check out this story from CTV News. It's quoting one of Ontario's most famous rabble-rousing labor leader, Sid Ryan. It says, Sid Ryan said the union will engage members in what he called vulnerable ridings across the province where the races are expected to be close. Ryan said, a union drive in our workplaces to drive down the conservative vote could be very, very effective and could be the difference between winning and losing. See, union leaders know that about 30% of their members vote for the conservative. It's almost the same, just a little bit lower than the general population, and they don't like that. So what are they going to do? Well, they can't advertise to the public anymore, but that doesn't mean they can't communicate with their members. Read the Elections Act and what is termed third-party advertising. It's very clear. The act actually says the transmission of a document directly by a person or a group to their members, employees, or shareholders. That doesn't count as third-party advertising. So whether we're talking about the Ontario Federation of Labour, which Sid Ryan represents, or Unifor, the group in the building across the street, you can expect that they are still going to be pushing for progressive candidates, whether that's Trudeau or in the Liberals or the guys in the other building across the street from here in the Jack Layton building. That, that's NDP headquarters right across from Union headquarters in downtown Ottawa, just a few blocks from Parliament Hill. What we're going to see over the coming couple of months between now and October 19th is a push by unions to their members. There are roughly 4 million Canadians who work in unionized environments and that means that they can be contacted either directly from their union or a labor group that that union belongs to. They can be sent mail outs, they can be phoned. Unions can run a complete get out the vote campaign for the NDP or the Liberals. They can claim it's nonpartisan, but you know what the message will be. And they can do all this and not be subject to the spending limits that third parties are generally subject to. So the idea that the unions have been shoved out of this campaign by Stephen Harper, not true at all. They've got four million households that they can contact and many of those households will have a husband or a wife. They'll have kids and they're going to be targeting those people directly just like they did in the Ontario campaign. Sid Ryan believes that they were able to drive down the union support of the, the progressive conservatives in Ontario from 30 percent to about 19 percent. Do the same thing at the federal level and soon you're talking Prime Minister Tom Mulcair. Canadians have a clear choice. Four more years of Mr. Harper and the Conservatives, or my plan for change. Now, it doesn't have to be this way. If we don't get that sort of result, then changes could be made to the labor laws in this country. Changes could be made to how unions are governed. Did you know that in union-friendly countries across Europe, that they're not allowed to spend their dues money on political campaigns? Not allowed at all. Places that are incredibly more union-friendly than Canada or the United States, they're not allowed to take forced dues money and spend it on political campaigns. They can ask for donations and then give it to political causes, but they can't forcibly take money off your paycheck to use for their political donations. That's where we need to get in Canada. Can you imagine the outcry if a giant company in Canada emailed or mailed directly every single one of their shareholders and employees and told them, you better not vote for Justin Trudeau or you better not vote for Tom Mulcair, you've got to support Stephen Harper, there would be a huge outcry. Yet that's what we're about to see from organizations, labor unions, that in many cases people have no choice but to join. If they want to be a teacher, if they want to be a paramedic, they want to be a police officer, a firefighter, if they want to be a civil servant. They have no choice but to join the union and then pay for these political activities. That has to change in Canada, and it's got to change soon.
Thank <laughs> you.